Hello, in this video we're going to learn about an example that designs another substructor unit. So first we're going to look at an n-bit adder. So how we can design an n-bit adder. So an n-bit adder can be a set of full ad adders connected in series. Full adder, full adder, full adder, and full adder. So we have four bits that we need to add. And so we can put, for example, four, four full adders, okay? The first one, we're gonna put the carry in, we're gonna put a zero. The carry out goes to the carry in. That's gonna be our S5, for example. And then we have our S4, S3, S2 and S1. And of course, we have this carry out, which becomes the carry in of the next one, right? And so on. Uh, what else are we missing? We're missing the X1. We have Y1. X2, Y2, X3 y3 finally x4 and y4 okay so this is what we call a ripple ripple carry adder okay so in the case of four bits so we have four full adders but it's called a ripple carry adder because as you increase the number of bits then the time the time delay for each of the bits to get to the last leftmost bit or the most significant bit is going to be increased so the delay from the the first full adder to the last full adder when you have a lot of bits is going to uh, be big so the delay is big and so that delay or that first number ripples through the whole uh, adder, okay? So that carry, the first carry ripples through the through the whole full adder. So that's what we, why we call it a ripple carry adder, okay? So that's an n-bit adder. If we wanna redraw this into just one block, okay, let me erase all of this. We can draw one block, and so we're gonna draw an n-bit Adder. So inside of that, we have all the full adders that we saw. So we can go from X1 up to Xn, have Y1, Y2, go to Yn, and of course we have our sums. So Sn, S1, S2 and, and so on. Okay. And we also have your first carry in. So that's what we call an n bit adder. And that's the general diagram for it. So an n bit adder. So now we're going to use that n adder unit to design an adder subtractor unit okay and we're going to connect some gates some logic circuitry to this um, adder unit so we can have addition and subtraction okay and addition and subtraction is going to be controlled by a variable now you can see that subtracting means adding a negative number so for example if we have x plus y that's an addition but if we want to do x min minus y is the same as saying x plus a minus y right so when we add we need to leave y alone we don't do anything to it we just add it to x okay when we are going to subtract we need to change y into a negative number okay and how do we do that that means we need to do a two's complement of it now um, a two's complement we can obtain by getting the ones complement and then we add a one to it, okay? How do we get the ones complement? Remember from another video, we invert each of the bits of that Y. 
So how do we get the complement of a variable, for example? Not only y. So depending on a control variable, we're going to get the complement or not. So we need to be able to say uh, get the complement or do not get the complement. Okay. So now, if we need to design for this, we, we can start with a true table. So we have x and y. In this case, x is going to be our control unit. That's the variable that is going to tell us if we need to complement or not. So if we have a 0 in the x, then we leave the y alone. If we have a 1 in the x, then we complement the y. Okay, so for example, the first row, we have x is a 0, so that means that I don't want to complement, so I just leave a zero, my output. In the case of x equal to zero, equal to zero then I don't want to complement, but when x is equal to one, then I do want to complement the y. This pattern of zero, one, one, zero, uh, we have seen it before, and it's an XOR, okay? The XOR, you can also look at it if we have an odd number of ones, then the output is a one. If we have an even number of ones, then the output is a zero. Okay, so L is equal to X, X or Y. So that means that if we have our Y variable, if we wanna, if we wanna invert it, we need to put our control unit into an XOR with the Y. So inverting the y is the first step of getting the two's complement, okay? And then we need to add a plus one to it, okay? But that's going to be taken care on our final design, okay? So we're going to start our diagram with an n bit adder. And now I'm going to put the x on the left side, x1 x2, x3, x4, and then on this side, I'm going to be rwise, rwise, y1, y2, y3, and y4, and they're going to be XOR with what? It's going to be XOR with a control unit. We had called it X maybe. In this case, we're going to call it add slash subtract. Okay, and I'm going to put an add with a bar on top of it. That means that if it's a, the variable is a zero, then that means that it's just going to add. And if it's a one, it's going to do the complement, okay? Now we had said that to get the two's complement, we need to add a one. So that means that we need in the carry in, we can add a one to it, okay? Into the Y. Or we can connect it directly to here. So that means that if it's a zero, it's not gonna add anything. It's gonna leave Y alone and it's just gonna pass it through here as it is. If our control variable is a 1, then it's going to add a 1 here, and it's going to have the complement of the y, okay? And here we're going to have the s and the carry, carry out and bit add. It's going to be s1, s2, s3, S4 and S5.